Welcome to Healthcare Experience Matters. This podcast is brought to you by the Healthcare Experience Foundation. And with today's episode, we're teaming with PRC. This podcast is dedicated to transforming the healthcare experience so that every person can receive and deliver the best care. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Healthcare Experience Matters. Our guest today is Katie Owens. She is the president and co-founder of the Healthcare Experience Foundation. We're talking about individual strengths, knowing our strengths. Katie, can you kick this conversation off for us? Just highlighting first a little bit about your passion in this field. Absolutely. So um, focusing on strengths is pretty core to our work at the Healthcare Experience Foundation. And so many times the enlightenment is that we are a perfection-driven industry for so many reasons. And so a lot of times the tendency that we have is to focus on the weaknesses, to focus on our, our biggest opies or opportunities for improvement. And by focusing and expanding and amplifying what's working well brings more and more momentum for positive change than if we double down on all the things that aren't working. Wow, that is a great point. I never actually thought about it like that. Medicine is so precise. But is it safe to say the healthcare experience itself is not so precise? Is that fair to say? How would you answer that question? Well, healthcare experiences are made up of millions of micro encounters, and every one of those is an opportunity to build trusting relationships, deliver the highest quality of care, to ensure the safest care. And so when we focus from a change management perspective on interpersonal and team strengths, it builds trust, it builds a sense of psychological safety. It allows us to bring people along with us. They want to be inspired. They don't necessarily want to be made to feel that everything that they're doing is less than. I can give you a perfect example. We were working with a senior team on some visibility strategies. And one of the things that through this approach, the executive team recognized is that when they're on the floor in a unit, in a department, let's say, you know, walking through a clinic or mother baby or the intensive care unit, the emergency department, the perception was that a senior leader is here. That means something must be wrong because they tend to hear from leaders when something's not working. And so when we focus on what's working well, what is the team proud of? Share with us some success stories. We start to build the level of trust and relationship between staff and senior leaders, just in this little micro example where staff begin to see, oh, I'm here to be you know, recognized. My leader wants to hear genuinely what's working. And then that opens up the door to say, you know, tell us what's, what's a challenge right now. We want to learn more. We want to support you. But if you don't start with the positive and start with the strengths, it becomes really difficult to uncover what are the most important priorities to then focus on? Well, how does one go about identifying their strengths? Maybe we assume we have something that's a strength that maybe isn't so strong. What do you think about that? So when our team does coaching and, and Kathy Boswell on our coaching team is just to me, one of the, the national thought leaders in this regard, strengths at their core interpersonally are those personal qualities whether those are skills, experiences, and talents that energize you, they make you great or they give you the potential that you can be great at. So a strength isn't necessarily just something that you are an expert at. For instance, you might be really effective and efficient at running a staffing plan, but that may not energize you. What may energize you is recruiting new team members to join your team or rewarding and recognizing. And so there's a balance and, and sort of inherent interdependency between things that we're good at and things that energize us. It makes perfect sense. So what do we know about people's happiness and levels of engagement in their work when they are using their strengths every day? Because I would assume we want a happy workforce out there. Casey, we absolutely want our team members feeling like they're using their strengths every day. And 
at the heart of that is employee engagement. When employees are engaged, they have the emotional commitment to their organization and its goals. When employees are engaged, they are much more um, likely to be retained in their organization and they're less likely to experience signs of compassion fatigue and burnout. And so focusing on strengths gives employees more autonomy. It makes them feel like they're practicing in their profession. And through our work with PRC, which is a does amazing work nationally in measuring and helping organizations improve employee engagement, we know that there's some key levers that employees say are most important in creating that engaged atmosphere. And it's having trust in senior leadership. It's effective communication between departments. And it's having personal access to training and resources. So employees want to learn. They want to grow. They want to be in a trusting teaming environment, which focuses and fosters on how are we building on our strengths together. Thanks, Katie. I think I completely understand now why being aware of our strengths is so important. So what about when our strengths are in overdrive? What does that mean? And what goes on in that situation? When we are in overdrive, focusing on our strengths is powerful. It's amazing to be in the moment with. There are times when we can overuse our strengths. And and as Kathy calls that overdrive. Overdrive is when we default and dig too deeply into one of our strengths. And it may serve as a barrier to finding a solution or to addressing a colleague. So let's say compassion is a core strength of mine. And I am heading into conflict. And I need to take a more assertive stance or a more outcomes-driven focus. And I keep drilling into my compassion strength. It might mean that I work around a problem or I, I permit something to continue happening because I keep relying on that compassion strength as a crutch versus focusing on an outcome and focusing on accountability. Or if I have a high degree of strength with attention to detail and my team is trying to figure out a a global strategy uh, or an an annual plan where where you want to kind of get the scaffolding and then fill in the details. Sometimes if somebody's focusing on that attention to detail strength and digging deeper and deeper, it can almost get in the way because of the complexity it brings with painting the, the total picture. You know, I don't know where I heard the piece of advice, but I think it's kind of common. And that is, Don't let your strengths become a weakness. What are your thoughts on that? When it comes to leading with strengths, we also have to turn on our peripheral vision. For instance, in that example, if I'm doubling down on compassion at the expense of accountability, that is is me jeopardizing my effectiveness because I'm over-relying on a strength versus paying attention to what other strengths do I have? Maybe it's interpersonal relationships that I can use to navigate conflict, to create accountability. It can also be a a limitation if we only live in our strengths and we don't spend time with others that have complementary strengths. So if paying attention to details doesn't energize me, and that means I don't spend time with those that are, have that diligence focus or that attention to detail or that outcomes-driven focus, I'm not rounding myself out as a leader and involving others in key decisions or conversations that help round out a total picture of a problem and catch the blind spots. Levels of engagement go up when people are using their strength. Is this true? And what kind of stats kind of back that that you can tell us about? So the research here is pretty compelling. Gallup did some work a couple of years ago and found that People who use their strengths every day are six times more likely to be engaged in their jobs and three times overall to be happier with their lives in general. And so when we think about those factors of employee engagement in particular in healthcare, this really creates that win-win professional personal life balance of creating more purpose, joy, and intention in our day. Katie, Why is it especially important to be aware of our strengths when we're working in a team working environment? 
you know, in healthcare teams change daily. We have different physicians and advanced practice providers on. We have different care team members assigned to units. We may have temporary staffing, you know, coming in and out of our departments, our floors, our clinics. And so when we're aware of our strengths, we have a deeper appreciation of not only the gifts that we bring to the table, but also some self-awareness around how do I find strengths in others that complement mine and might help me with a blind spot. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to today's discussion about individual strengths, strengths in a team working environment, or levels of engagement, anything else we missed that you wanted to touch on before we wrap up, Katie? I think for our listeners who are focusing on culture and change and re-engaging their workforce, my hurting wisdom would be to sort of separate that need that we all have to focus on problems and issues. And before we go in that direction, to focus on some strengths-oriented questions. What are the strengths that I see in this individual? What is this team most proud of? What do they feel that they've been most successful with? That allows us to really frame things in a way that builds a relationship and creates a safer environment to then say, hey, if we're thinking about retaining more of our team members, what do you think I should focus on that are the, the top three things that you think would make a difference? Or If we really want to elevate our first impressions with our patients and our family members, what are two or three things that you think would help us really wow them, especially when they're forming that critical first look at our organization that allows the team to grow in their comfort? It helps us frame things with positive intent. And at the end of the day, in our work, we see that it gets richer responses to make us better leaders. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Healthcare Experience Matters. Healthcare Experience Matters is brought to you by the Healthcare Experience Foundation with today's episode teaming with PRC. To learn more, visit healthcareexperience.org. That's healthcareexperience.org.